Hello everybody, this is Adrian Anonymous, your new host on DB's Hype channel. I'll be hosting multiple videos alongside Vro, so get ready for the second part of the Universe Conflict Saga Explained. To watch part 1, please check the link in the description. Last time on Super Dragon Ball Heroes, Hart's villainy was revealed not just to the world but to the entire multiverse as he launched an attack to power something mysterious called the Universal Seed. Working together with Cumber, Zamasu, and a throng of new enemies called Rags, Kamen, and Orin. With the Universal Seed finally complete, the team assigned to protect Universe 7 really has to work it out for them. Will they manage to stand against all odds? Find out this time on Super Dragon Ball Heroes. As Super Saiyan Goku rises up to the Universal Seed, Hart speeds over to him and punches him with surprisingly fast force. Trunks looks to intervene but can't as Zamasu directly attacks him, and everyone is on the defensive. That is, until Goku manages to go Super Saiyan Blue, allowing them to fight much more evenly in the heat of close quarters fighting. Hart claims to have read Goku's mind again sensing his desire to be the strongest fighter ever, and he believes himself to be the one who can grant that wish. He proves to be really strong even for Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Able to reflect his Ki Blast back at him, but even after all this, Goku is not yet satisfied. This makes him realize Hearts isn't even fighting seriously yet, but that just makes him pull out his signature energy cubes to chase and trap Goku. As he flees, he does his best to throw as many Hearts projectiles back at him, and even manages to juggle him into the sky successfully buying him enough time to Kamehameha Hearts straight through the ground, miles below. Meanwhile, Piccolo and Seventeen are up against Cameron, providing support for each other at the most crucial of times. Cameron blasts are still mighty strong, powerful enough to punch through Seventeen shields without trying. But as Cameron cheers, Piccolo has been saving so much of his power all this time and shoots him cleanly through his stomach in very familiar fashion. But the wound closes itself up instantly. Bad news for them, as a mighty explosion from Cameron tears through several city blocks. From the rubble of the Kamehameha, Hart stands up only slightly damaged. He pulls in Goku close to him, using his gravity manipulation and gloats at how little power Goku actually used. He manages to overcome Gravity Fist, staying in Super Saiyan Blue and sending volleys upon volleys of Ki Blast back and forth. Once they're back in the air, Hearts surrounds himself with energy cubes and Purple Aura indicates his ascension to Super Hearts. Goku and Hearts race for the sky, chasing each other, but Super Hearts gets the upper hand with the damaging surprise attack. He pins Goku to the ground, crushing him against the weight of the earth, enough for him to revert in his base form. In the wake of this huge purple explosion, Cameron proclaims himself to be the strongest. When Seventeen drops his barrier, he and Piccolo go on the offensive. The sheer number of key blasts directed at Cameron between the two is enough to make cracks appear in their physical form. They're about to split back into two tuffles. Hart senses the fusion's distress and decides to help them in a pinch, lending them some of the power of the universe seed. The seed itself enters their body and causes a colossal transformation that turns them into an actual giant. They're so big and imposing that it snaps Vegeta and Trunks out of their fight with Zamasu to go and aid their allies. But Piccolo and Seventeen have no choice but to flee from the utterly ridiculous power of their new mouth beams. As their own attacks barely even leave a scratch, Cameron knocks out the Namekian and the android to the ground with a single arm thrust as Vegeta and Trunks finally arrive to battle this new threat. And Vegeta's own highly aggressive fighting style pushes them back for a little while, but only for a little. The mouth beams are still overwhelming, knocking the Saiyans back to their base form. With this attack, Hart senses the universe seed is finally ready, and just before Cameron looks like he's about to crush Vegeta to death, Goku finally arrives in the battle and makes one desperate attempt to hold him back. In the chaos, Cameron has Goku in a crush grip, but he's about to break, but he's able to break out of the impending doom with the quick arrival of Ultra Instinct Sign. Cameron can still speak even in this gargantuan form proclaiming to still be the strongest no matter what. With this divine key surrounding him again, Goku's able to dodge and counterattack all of their blows with minimal effort. He even pushes back a mouth beam with nothing but sheer force of his body. And with Cameron stunned, Goku's ultra instinct attack is enough to bring them to the verge of collapse. As a last ditch effort, Cameron seeks to vaporize Goku with another beam, and it seems to have worked for a second. But as the dust clears, and we see that Goku has managed to shrug off the energy of the beam like it was nothing. Having entered the power of mastered Ultra Instinct, even Hearts is able to acknowledge the divine angelic strength coming off of him. The rest of the fight is a cakewalk for Goku, dodging beams left and right with little care, and finally having the power to pick them up and swing them around by the tail with a single circle through enough to send them face first into a crater. And yet, even after all of this, Cameron doesn't know when to give up. 
They try and fail to grab Goku before he teleports right in front of them to deliver a rising roundhouse. As the rest of the dragon team swoops in to help Goku to shower the enemy in Ki Blast, as Piccolo puts it, if they support him, he won't run out of energy as quickly. With all four of them pinning Cameron in place, Goku has the time to charge up a Kamehameha wave strong enough to crack the gem containing the universe seed, and the final punch from him shatters it completely. With this, Kamen and Orin finally spill apart, dead, and the sight is set ablaze as the exhausted Goku collapses into Piccolo's arms. Trunks notices something rising out of the fire, the universe seed, which comes to rest in Heart's hands. Hearts confirms that all the power of the universe has finally been absorbed into the sea, and uses it to power up even further. Meanwhile, Zamastu watches from the distance, sinisterly suggesting how he's also been waiting for an opportunity for Hearts to power up. At their limit, the defenders of Universe 7 watch as more and more energy cubes assemble around Hearts, forming a perfect tesseract. As Vegeta goes to attack the weird object in the sky, someone appears, and blocks the blast. Zamasu. Zamasu explains why he's been working so closely with Hearts, for his own selfish reasons. If Hearts manages to go through with killing Zeno, then the Zero Mortals plan will be able to go through at last. He then lets a hammer of justice rain down on the heroes, before dispatching them with a singular winding attack one by one. Goku goes straight for him, but Zamasu is able to grapple with him and immobilize all of his limbs, talking down to him and expressing his disappointment. The stage seems set for Zamasu to land Goku a crushing defeat when someone else drops in, literally out of the sky, straight from Universe 11. It's... Jiren? He prevents Zamasu from dealing the killing blow, but much to everyone's shock, Zamasu still perceives it all as a bad joke, swatting away Jiren's attacks and preparing for another. When time freezes, there's only one person it could be, and as a halo forms around Zamasu, a portal also materializes in front of him, and out comes Universe 6's HIT! Hired by his own Supreme Kai, he actually does land an attack on Zamasu, and knocks him out of his Halo stance. Goku, Jiren, and Hit all have landed even more attacks if it weren't for a burst of energy blowing everybody backward. Suddenly, the Universe Seed bursts out of the Golden Tesseract containing it, which shatters. Out comes Perfect Hearts, Zamasu at his side. But they do not fight together. Hearts thanks Zamasu for his services, but does not need his immortality anymore, and wants to take complete control of the plan now. He summons a massive cube that surrounds Zamasu and shrinks him down so much that he gets erased from existence. It's shocking enough for even the Grand Minister to notice off-world. This, he tells the heroes, is the ultimate death of a god. Hearts, in a new form, has gone completely golden with six horns protruding from his back, inviting everyone to taste his power. He lets the orbs around him encircle the fighters and fly at them from all directions with impressive speed. Their crazy maneuvers force everyone against each other's back, but these orbs are merely just a distraction to let perfect hearts land dirty blows on them off guard. This gambit allows him to be the last among them standing, and not even Super Saiyan Blue can escape his powered up gravity abilities and telepathy. His enhanced gravity fist causes the cubes to erupt from the ground beneath everyone hitting them over and over again, forming another giant orange cube that starts to crash down to the earth, and another huge crater forms. Both Jiren and Hit engage him at the same time, and as the other lick their wounds, Goku suggests a plan to Vegeta. Fusion, which of course Vegeta is dead set against it at first. With others having bought more time, Gogeta is on the battlefield, ready to fight Hearts. With Gogeta and Hearts preparing for battle, Hearts sees no point in keeping the others around, so his orbs strike them all down to the ground. Meanwhile, Gogeta finally powers up to Super Saiyan Blue and the shockwave from their colliding fists is so strong that it blows everybody else back. But ultimately, Gogeta's fist gets the upper hand against Hearts. <laughs> I'll be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. This single landed blow angers Hearts, and with Gogeta in his head, all it takes is a single wave from his hand to fire straight back with some energy cubes. And Gogeta dodges his punches effortlessly. He even dodges the projectile key cubes, batting them all away and closing the gap between the two once again. Hearts knows when he's beat. Gogeta is clearly the stronger fighter in this battle. But then, Hearts tries another tactic, manipulation. He suggests Gogeta fight as his ally, instead of his enemy, so they can kill Goku's old friend together. Gogeta rejects this idea though, and with the idea rejected, Hearts just opts for all-out destruction. He rises into the air and immobilizes everyone, pulling a giant meteor from the outer space with the power of the universe seed to destroy the world altogether. 
with Gogeta being the only one standing between it and Annihilation, the stage is set for a spectacle. Gogeta launches a big bang attack to stop the God and Meteor from reaching the ground. And when the two unstoppable forces collide, the big bang surrounds the entire Meteor with its key, holding it in place. No matter though, as Hearts uses more of his power to push it closer to the ground, but Gogeta's auras burst with the power to push the tug of war in his favor. Back on the ground, Piccolo believes that without their help, the world will surely be destroyed. So now with his waiting clothing removed, he flies up with others to support Gogeta, who's charging up a Kamehameha wave, and continues to punch the God Meteor, but doesn't make any headway, which makes Hearts chuckle and laugh. That's when Hit and Jiren appear alongside him and begin to lend him their power. It empowers the beam so much the meteor finally cracks under its pressure and sending rock fragments raining down everywhere. That's where Piccolo comes in, blasting debris large and small so none of it hits the ground and causes major damage. It's all a big success and Gogeta goes to fight Heart one on one again. At last, Hearts is amazed that the Saiyan Fusion can potentially fight infinitely. But of course, that means he's outmaxed. Gogeta delivers one single punch to the universe seed and it shatters causing his physical form to begin disintegrating. In his final moments, he explained why he did what he did. Without an unstable god that could destroy the universe at any given point, the world and humanity would be much safer. So much for that. As Hearts is done for good, all that's left is Goku who looks out on the clearing sky with the recognition from the Grand Minister. Back at Zeno's palace, the twin destroyer gods Champa and Beerus' special mission is revealed to chaperone their game of hide and seek. Elsewhere, back in Fuse's secure location, the spectator watches with glee and thanks Hearts for his sacrifice, but decides it's time to start on the next opponent and the next saga right away.